in the next few minutes. We are going to do the back end of our interview packed evening now. I'm going to welcome to the show, uh, we had somebody from the cartoon world, uh, Mike Allred. Let me just bring him up. Our second second guest of the evening uh, is on the television end of things. You might uh, be aware of uh, a cable channel, the Shout Network, and we have somebody from the Shout Network. I want to bring up uh, on the show, from the Shout Network, I guess, he, are you an executive at the Shout Network, Matthew Tompkins? Hi, Tom. Yes, I'm head of programming at Shout. Uh, well, thanks for coming on the show. I guess uh, we just had somebody on from the cartoon world. Now we've got somebody on from the TV world. Yes. Very excited to be talking to you. Uh I'm very pleased to announce that uh, the Shout Network is now part of the Comcast family. Okay, which uh, is pretty exciting news because everybody in this area, I think, is Comcast yeah. in New Jersey for the most part. That's right. I guess there's Time Warner Cable in New York. I don't know if that's part of the uh, family. We're working on that. We're working on that, but definitely Comcast as of as of next week. Okay. So uh, your uh, New Jersey viewers will be uh, able to tune in to the, uh, the Shout Network. Great. And uh, actually, I'm, ca- I'm calling to, to just inform your listeners about our uh, what we have planned and uh, mainly to pump the, uh, the spring, uh, spring lineup. The spring lineup. Yes. Well, first of all, why don't you just give people a background on the Shout Network, just a quick log line for what uh, Shout is. Because, you know, like TNT is movies right. and, you know, drama and... You know, crime, you know, core TV is, you know, obviously crime stuff. And what is the Shout Network? Tom, we are all of that and more. Okay, so the Shout Network is what is like a little bit of everything? It's a little bit of everything, but it's all high quality. It's all the best you're ever going to see on TV. Okay. It's the greatest. So the spring lineup yes. you're announcing. Yes. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what people can look for out of the Shout Network? Well, number one, the uh, the show that, that really built the Shout Network and really pushed us into, into the limelight is uh, is uh, still in production and still doing great, and that is, of course, the uh, the Van Dyke vehicle. Okay, and that's Diagnosis Murder? What's that? You said the Van Dyke vehicle. It's Diagnosis Murder, Dick Van Dyke show? <laughs> Not Dick Van Dyke, Jerry. Okay, uh, Jerry Van Dyke. What what is his show? Jerry Van Dyke's Crime Crunchers. Okay. Well, I, I, again, I don't have the Shout Network right now. So. Oh, you read about that show though, haven't I've, you? I, you know, I think I heard about it in passing. Yeah. Jerry, what's it? Jerry Van Dyke's Crime Crunchers. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And what is that? Oh my God! It's it's uh, it, it it's a very exciting show. It's um, uh, basically it's Beretta meets RoboCop. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty. That sounds it's got pretty that '70s gritty feel, you know. But mm-hmm. it's it's also kind of space age too. And the uh, what sets it apart from other other crime crime solving shows is that uh, every week uh-huh. Jerry teams up with a group uh, of people who are basically his crime crunchers for that week. Okay. So uh, I believe the first episode that's going to show up in your area, uh, his um, it's called. It's called the uh, the case of the garage murders, and he's being helped by a band. I think it was from your area. A group of musicians called the Flesh Tones. Yes, they are from up in yeah. this area. So they uh, they're helping him crunch crime in that episode. Okay, really, the yeah. Flesh Tones acting. Oh yeah, yes, yes. And uh, okay, so people can look for the Flesh Tones to help out Jerry Van Dyke solve crime. Yes, he he crunches crimes. A, a crunching crimes. Yeah. I'm sorry. That is copyrighted too. Uh, okay, Jerry Van Dyke's crime cruncher. Yep. So, the, so Jerry Van Dyke and and uh, Keith String, crunching crime. Who's that? Uh, he's the guitarist in the Flesh Tones. Oh right. Okay. Yes. Yes. I think you're right. Uh, hey, I want to tell you about a whole slew of reality shows that we got going. Okay. Okay. As 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 you all know, this is what's really happening. This is this is what pulls in the viewers. The reality program. The reality program, which is really, I guess, it is a big deal. Reality programming is something that uh, 
seems to be kind of like bread and butter for a lot of these networks. Yes, and uh, I think everyone's going to agree that no one does it like uh, the Shout Network does when they see Sex Camp. What is se- uh, Sex Camp? What sex is that? Camp. Sex Camp, Tom, answers the age-old question, just what goes on when seven construction workers and seven exotic dancers are dropped in the middle of a remote Alaskan forest. So that's the question that you're asking. And it's answered on the show. Sex camp. Yes. Seven construction workers. Yep. Seven exotic dancers. Strippers. Strippers, okay. And what are some of the, have you, have episodes of this been filmed? We're wrapping it up now. Okay, and what is the general tone of the show? Uh, sex. Well, I guess it's called Sex Camp, so yeah. I figured that w- yeah. would have a, s- a component of it. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, sex <laughs> sex in the forest, sex uh, in streams, sex uh, in, in tundra, it's got it all. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, Sex Camp. It's pretty sexy. It sounds great. We're hoping for a hard R. A hard R? Rating. For for what? It, uh, this is a mo- uh, this is not a movie though. No, it's a TV show. Uh huh. But we're hoping, hoping, hoping it gets through. Basically, you know what I mean? Uh, no. Through I... censors. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're hoping to get like what through? The show. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's you know, it's nasty. I mean, are there any characters that stand out who like you know America falls in love with certain people? Uh... Depends if if uh, you love. Uh, sex-addicted uh, construction workers named Mort. This guy Mort, he's, he's going he's gonna to be on the cover of, uh, of some magazine. I, I don't know what. I mean, it could be, uh, could be Time. It could be, it could be Leg Show. I don't know. Wow. Let's move on, though, okay? So Mort. Mort. He's, he's going to be famous. I can't wait. So America can pretty much get ready. Get ready for Mort. Get ready for sex camp is what it is. Okay, so we will get ready for sex. What else? Uh, buried Alive. <laughs> buried Alive. That sounds horrifying. Just what the title implies. The ta- <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, uh, the tagline we've got, Buried Alive. How long can you last? Well, I guess everybody probably can last for about the same amount. No, some people have, have bigger lung capacity. I mean, you can you can breathe down there. It's difficult. It's just you know. Can, What's down there? Yeah, it's a pit. It's, it's well. That what? You fill it's, up? It's a glorified grave. So a grave, basically, that you're filling in. Yes. And how how do people win? Just to whoever lasts the longest. Whoever doesn't, you know. I mean, it, Who, no. Whoever doesn't, you know what? I don't want to get into that and spoil the ending for anybody. Humor me. Well, you know, you can kind of breathe down there. It's, I mean, it's difficult. So through, through the dirt being dumped on you. Yes. Uh huh. And has, has anybody died? I'm sorry. What was that? Has anybody died during the making uh, of the show? I, I really don't want to give anything away. I don't think it's fair to the viewers. Okay. But uh, it's exciting. It's a very exciting show. All right, Tom. So... Are you are you ready for Joe Billionaire? Joe Billionaire. Yeah. Well, you mean like Joe Millionaire? Uh, it's the same concept, but he's a billionaire. Okay. It's very similar to that show. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, it can't be that show, otherwise you guys have got your the pantsuit off. Well, it, right? it's, it's Joe Billionaire. It's different. It's not, it's not Millionaire. The different thing is, you know how that guy was kind of good looking? And he's young. Yeah. And he's really sweet to the girls. Yeah, Evan. This guy's not quite like that. He's, well, six, he's 60 years old. Okay. He looks like Truman Capote. He's bedridden. And he's mean to the girls. <laughs> what is his name? This is just horrifying that this is actually what people can look forward to on the Shout Network for the spring schedule. I tell you this. What? America will fall in love with Gus. He's like your crabby grandpa. Except he's harassing young women. He's not so much harassing them as ordering them around and making them do things that they really don't want to do. That sounds terrible. It's, it's great. 
It's great. It's great. It sounds awful. Hey, you want awful? I think this show is... This show will be perceived as awful, but I think it will go down as one of the greatest shows ever. Uh-huh. Drink This. Okay. What is What goes on on Drink This? Well, that's, that's the question. Just what is in that glass? Is it apple juice? Or is it toxic oh. waste? Oh. So then people drink it for prize money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I should say we're joined by Matthew Tompkin, who, Tompkins, who is an executive over at the Shout Network, which is coming to New Jersey, uh, I guess on Comcast Cable, you said? That's right. And people can look forward to uh, people can look forward to these shows for the upcoming spring schedule. And more. Okay. Okay, here's the, here's the one I'm most excited about in, in all, all the reality shows we've got going. Yeah. It's called Under the Knife. Okay. Okay. It's, it's basically a trust-based show. You know, you how much do you trust this person? Uh-huh. And the, the, the main question is, is this guy really a surgeon? Really? Yeah. So so you're just taking it on, on uh, how many people on the show are not surgeons? Well, hey, it's their choice. They, they want the prizes. I can't help it if they're greedy. But, well, you know, you vaguely can if you didn't create such a, uh, a speed trap of a show. To catch to catch the greedy at their at, at doing what they do. Tom, just sit back and watch and enjoy. That's all. That's all I had to say to you and your listeners. Let's talk Benson and Hedges, okay? Okay. We're we're out of the reality bracket here, okay? This is this is a great two hour variety show, Benson and Hedges, uh -huh. starring Bob Guillaume, sure, and Robert Hedges, who is. Uh... Epstein, That's right, right, on Welcome Back, he was, a, he was a sweat hog. And Robert Guillaume is the um, the Benson. Okay, okay, now I get it. You got it, it. Benson yeah. and Hedges. Isn't sure. that great? That was my concept. That that na I sold that name, that okay. title. Isn't that great? It's, yeah. a it's a variety show. Uh-huh. Singing, dancing, little skits, little sketches. Uh, I'm looking at my, my sheet here. Uh, the first show that you guys are going to see. The guests are uh, the great 50s rock and roll act, uh, Danny and the Juniors. Okay. Ken Howard. The White Shadow. The White Shadow, exactly. And uh, Vinny Vincent. From Kiss. Exactly. Who was the replacement for Ace Frehley. I, I believe you're right, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Yes, and at the end of the show, yeah. everyone sings a song. Together, it's very exciting. It's very moving, uh -huh. and uh, it says here that on the show that you guys are going to see, they sing Elvira by the Oak Ridge Boys. Wow! So I can actually look forward to seeing Ken Howard. Ken Howard sing Elvira with uh, Vinnie Vincent and Danny and the Juniors. Yeah, and Robert Guillaume and Robert and Hedges. Robert Hedges. Wow! Yes. So Benson and Hedges, we can look forward to That's a right. variety show. That's right. Hey. Speaking of music... And they say the variety show is dead. It's it's not. Uh-huh. Speaking of music... Yeah, not, yeah. You know those shows on VH1, Behind the Music? Sure. We've got something very similar. Uh-huh. called The Other Side of the Music. Okay. Okay? Basically, say, kind of, you know, similar concept. We go to the other side of the music, see what happened in an artist's ascent of fame... What happened on their way down, you know? So we get the, the heights and the lows. And um, I'm very excited about our, our first uh, our first edition of that show. And what what is that? We go in-depth and give you everything you ever wanted to know about the Jump in the Saddle Band. Jump in the Saddle Band, that sounds familiar. Oh, please. Are, are you serious? Yeah, I'm. I'm really serious. Who, who is that? I'll give you a hint. You ready? Yeah. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, okay. Now I know. Say it. Curly shovel. That's right. Yeah. The greatest song of the '80s. Com no, that is not the greatest song of the '80s. Oh, I think it is. Well, now, first of all, the other side of the music. Yes. So, so you're just ripping off behind the music, then? I don't think so. Well, instead of going behind the music, you're going on the other side of the right, music. Right, right. 
which is all, that's a world of difference. Oh, I think it is. The way we do it, it's going to be great. And th- this one's really exciting. There's some weird twists and turns in this. Did you know that one of those guys ate one of the other guys while on a camping trip? No, I didn't. They got lost. They were, they were missing for three weeks. Really? So one of the guys from Jump in the Saddle yep, band yep. ate I think another. it was I think I think it was Herb the drummer ate Roger the keyboardist. Okay. I think. And uh one of the other guys became like a high school basketball coach or something too. So So we'll get some footage of him coaching. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's good. Are are we gonna see anybody do an acoustic version of uh Curly Shuffle with just their acoustic guitar? Yeah, uh, all the remaining members do individual acoustic versions. Oh, so there's there's more than one. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, there's, I mean, I think there were, I think there were six guys in the band, so obviously the one guy bought it, so there's five versions, yeah. So that takes up a full 20 minutes of the show. At, le- at least, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a great song. Yeah, gr- wow, I can, and I can't wait to hear... Five different people sing it. Uh, it with... It's it's pretty moving. Hey, speaking of moving, I love your transitions. By the way, oh, <laughs> you're a real you're a real network pro. That's why that's why I have the job. Uh huh. Okay. You, as, as I as I asked you, are you ready for drama? Sure. How about the gangs of Philadelphia? Okay, what is that? Well, you know that movie, the the sure. gangs. Oh of yeah, New York. yeah, yeah, gangs of New York, absolutely. Which wasn't very good. It was, it was, I think, it, well, we're not going to talk about movies no. here. Let's talk about gang. What is Gangs of Philadelphia? Okay. Takes place in the hot summer of 1979. Uh-huh. Remember, remember that summer? Um, a little bit. Oh, it was hot. Okay. Um, Basically, what this boils down to? Yeah. The heroes of Philly, the street, the guys who walk the streets versus a bunch of New Jersey thugs. Uh-huh. And I, I can't rave about this guy enough. We got a teleplay completely unsolicited by a great unknown writer. His, name, I, is, his name is Roy Ziegler. Roy Ziegler, yes. You know him? Uh, yeah, I do know who Roy Ziegler is. Oh, my God. How, how, how do you know him? He, uh, he's a, a family friend. Wow, I, I envy you. He, he's he's going to star in this thing. He's going to direct it. Guess who he got to co-star with him? Can I take a guess? Yes. Robert Hazard. I don't. I don't know who that is, but is he from Philadelphia? Yeah. Well, this guy is Mr. Philadelphia. In okay. The, in the sports world. Doctor J. No. Who? Mike Schmidt. Okay. Schmitty. Mike Schmidt. Sure. So that's that's going to get us some serious awards. So the Gangs of Philadelphia is your Sopranos yes, or something. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know how forensics is, is, is a big is a big deal? Sure. You know, the uh, court See, TV forensic files, the Friday night uh, forensics, the, the Saturday night solution. Yeah. Are you ready for CSC? What is that? You know CSI, that show? Yep. Crime scene investigators? Uh-huh. This is crime scene cleaners. Oh, God. That's disgusting. These are the people that clean up after those hot, hot medical examina- uh, examiners in their tight bell bottoms clear the scene. This is, these guys come in and actually clean up the stuff. Or like hose everything down? Hose it down, scrub it down, pick, pick parts off of in, embedded in curtains and things. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, sounds cool. Wow. So CSC. Uh-huh. Crime scene cleaners. Yeah. I can't wait for that one. Really good. You like sports, right? Of course. Are you ready for this bomb, Sean? I'm going to drop on you. Okay. Uh, bomb away. The Shout Network. Proud to announce we're the official network of the NBA. I thought ABC was the official network of the NBA. I no. thought that happened just like this year. No, no, no. Wait, what NBA are you, are you talking about? Um, National Basketball Association. Oh, this is the National Bowling Association. Yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, I was mistaken. Well, you know all, all about Mikey Delmonico. No. Oh, this Uh-oh. kid's great. This kid's like this. He's the new Tiger Woods. He's really? Eight, he's 18 years old. He's uh-huh. from Omaha. 
he's like a god to these kids. You mark my words, bowling is going to surpass all sports by 2009. Really? Yep. All sports? All, everything combined. Football? Over. Baseball? Over. Basketball? Beyond over. Wow. Everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be the sport. It's going to be everybody's sport. So people are going to thrill to watching this. Uh, oh, they do already. People bowl. They do already. Yeah, uh, it sounds thrilling. You ready for Nancy Kerrigan's sports pinata? What, what is that? It's a three-hour show every Saturday hosted by Nancy Kerrigan, who I'm sure you, you remember. Sure, the great, ice skater. Great skater. Basically, she's, she's going to talk about sports. Each episode begins with her breaking open a pinata. And all, all kinds of topics come out, and she'll just pick up a topic and, 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 and go with it. It's three hours long. It's great. Wow. Um, Nancy's great. Mm-hmm. She's not at all the a-hole that uh, she's made out to be. <laughs> okay. That's okay? news to me. So that, yeah, that, that's, that's a, a, a misconception about her that, that I personally need, uh, feel needs rectifying. Okay. Okay. Let's talk... Um, Let's talk sitcoms. Okay. Okay. We're we're most proud uh, of these two sitcoms. One of them is called Don't Tell General Lee. Don't tell General Lee. Yes. It's a Civil War comedy. Don't. Okay. What is Don't Tell General Lee about? Oh, it's just it's just full of bat- battlefield hijinks. Okay. From the Civil War. Battlefield hijinks from the Civil War. That doesn't sound like a particularly fun place. Oh, it sounds great, doesn't it? No, it sounds awful. Well, I mean, you know, H- Hogan's Heroes didn't didn't sound like it would be uh, fun in, in, in concept, you know? Uh-huh. That's not funny, is it? But it it was funny. And, I mean, what's, you know, Battlefield hijinks. I, th- I, th- I think that's great. You yeah. don't like it. Wow. I'm not, I don't think I'll be tuning into Don't Tell General Lee. Well, maybe this will be more up your alley. Mm-hmm. Show called Friends for Life. What is that? It's a sitcom. It's hilarious. It takes place in a, in a maximum security prison. Uh huh. Basically, just about all the funny stuff that happens to these guys. A funny stuff in what? A maximum security prison? Yeah. Like what? What kind of funny stuff? Oh, well, like um, for instance, one episode. There's a big rock concert going on. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, sure. it's coming up later in the week, and 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 there's there's tickets available via the local radio station. They're having a contest. Okay, so the thirteenth caller wins tickets to see whoever the Foo Fighters. Okay. One of the guys really wants to go. Okay. So one of the, wait, one of the guys who in the prison? In the prison, yeah. Okay. So he calls. Yeah. He's the thirteenth caller. All right. Okay. He he gets the tickets. Yeah. Now the real dilemma is, how is he going to get out of the prison? Go to the show, get the tickets, enjoy the show, and then oh. and then sneak back in. And sneak back in. Why is he sneaking back in? Well, he he doesn't want to get caught. Well, he shouldn't have he shouldn't have broken out of jail. But it's the Foo Fighters. No, see, this is just this. This is the most unrealistic thing I've ever heard in my life. Huh? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's testing great. Great. Well, I guess America's full of idiots. Jeez, I, I, I thought you would be be more supportive of this. Oh, um, look, I'm hearing you. They all can't be winners. Well, these are winners. No, they all can't be winners. Are you ready for something a little racy? Well, I thought you like sex camp? Racier. <laughs> All right, sure. Okay, this is, uh, are you familiar with, uh, we talked about Joe Millionaire earlier. Sure. You know Paul the butler? Uh-huh. Well, several years ago, Paul uh, had a little different career going for himself. Okay. Okay, he, he was in movies. Uh, Paul the Butler. Paul the Butler. Okay. This movie's probably one he would rather you not see. Uh-huh. It's called Backdoor Butler. 
Oh, okay. Backdoor Butler. Yeah. So we got the rights to it. And okay. We're, we're very excited about that. Very honored to have the rights to this. To <laughs> very honored. To, I can't believe anybody would say they're honored to have the rights to something called Backdoor Butler. Oh, this movie is is it's good. I mean, it's uh, it'll 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 get you aroused definitely. <laughs> and and uh, so. But he Paul is in it. Oh, Paul's the star of it. What? And what? The, and he plays a butler in the movie. He plays a butler who, who he plays a butler who plays basically is what it is. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so that's going to be on at ten o'clock uh, next Thursday night. All right. Well, when all the kids are asleep. Great. So, so but no, wait, wait, wait. Ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. What night? Uh, next, I think uh, next Thursday night. Next Thursday yeah. night yeah. and. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock. Sorry about that. <laughs> 9 o'clock? Yeah. Now what, uh, this movie's racier than, than Sex Camp? It, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's triple X. What do you mean triple X? Not an actual porno movie. Oh, yes, yes. Wait, so for, for, oh, wait, I'm shocked for about 11 different reasons right now. Okay. This butler right. did a porno movie. He did. Now, does he just act in this movie, or does he... Is he in scenes in this movie? Oh, he's in every scene. In every scene yeah. as a porno actor? He packs and gets packed, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. He, I don't even want you to repeat that. Okay. He, yeah, You're going to show it on your channel at 9 p.m. now. A, por correct, yeah. a porno movie. Well, yeah, we, we blurred a couple things out, uh, things that were really... What? Well, I can't even but say... But we took like out that. the parts where they used the spray cam. The what? The spray cam. All right, we're going to go very gingerly on this. Okay. What is the spray cam? Well, it, it is what it, it it is what you think it is. I don't even want to know. Okay, well Please, let's, let's, let's not. Let's, let's not, go. Be, yeah, oh. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. That's an image. I might even have the wrong image in my mind. You probably do. I mean, it's, but, it's worse than you think it is. <laughs> oh, it's worse than I yeah, think it is. Yeah. So. Okay. But you know, the the adults who are listening can watch it next Thursday and decide for themselves uh-huh okay great all right um here's something we're really excited about uh-huh maybe more than anything i should say we're joined by matthew tompkins who's a an exec over at shout network i i'm head of programming yeah head of programming at the shout network which is new to uh, comcast cable in this area he's telling us all about their new spring lineup why a spring lineup by the way why not a fall lineup Oh, well, spring, you know, spring is, is when things are, you know, are changing. It's, it's uh, you know, you're renewed. The fall is when things are dying. And we didn't want to be associated with that. We want to be associated with life, mm -hmm. with blossoming. And sure. what better time of year for the Shout Network to make its debut in the greatest area in the world than spring? Sounds like it might work. Oh, here, here, before I get to the big one, here's here's something else we're doing. We're we're uh, we're spinning off a couple movies in, into TV shows. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of them is the, it's, it's going to be mind blowing. It's uh, Doctor T and the Women. Yeah, that's a Richard Gere movie, right? Yes, he he, he plays a gynecologist. Yeah, what is that now? So we're spinning that off into uh, it's it's a comedy sitcom was uh, uh, of the same name but we couldn't get uh obviously we couldn't get uh mr gear or or helen hunt to to be in the show so. okay who did you get uh ian Ziering from 90210 yes and and his wife nikki okay great so they're 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 well, stars, well stars. congratulations on that and we've also got a heaven's gate series too a heaven's gate tv series yes and what is that like? A it's just a TV version of of the movie. It, it takes it takes up where the, where the the film left off. Okay. Does anybody even remember where the film left off? Personally, no, I don't. But uh, um, I mean, it's going to be great. Uh huh. Yeah. It, so it sounds unbelievably exciting. We're trying to get Jacob Dylan to star in it. From uh, the Wallflower. Exactly. Yes. Wow. So yeah. that would be like an acting coup. Oh, oh my God! Yes. Yeah. Wow. Could you imagine that? Mm-hmm. 
if he actually starred in this thing? I, th- I think he'll do it. I think he'll do it. So here's the big one. Are you ready? We can only cross our fingers on that, right? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm getting chills. Here's sure. the big one. What's that? You know about the, the, o- the uh, O'Reilly uh, factor. Sure, it's a political show. Yeah. He's great. Uh-huh. Um, this show is it's similar in tone, but it's, gonna, it's just going to blow that guy out of the water. Really? Okay? It's called the Gargoyla Quotient. The Gargoyla Quotient? Yes. Now, who is Gargoyla? We found this guy, actually in your neck of the woods, a town called Newbridge. Sure. New Jersey. Uh Uh-huh. This guy, this guy is the most outspoken guy I've ever come across. Okay. He's, I don't think he'd mind me saying this. He's insane. He, he's at, at one time, the most right-wing person you'll ever come across. Just last week, he, he he called Reagan a traitor. Re- Ronald Reagan. Yes, he said he was he, he was he was too soft on uh, on uh, international policy. Ronald Reagan was too soft on ex- international ex- policy. Exactly. So he says that. Then he'll turn around and he he's 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 uh, he's he's pro-choice. Uh huh. So you never know what you're going to get with this guy. So this guy's just all over the he's map. He's all over the place. He's uh, he's pro death penalty, but he's really lobbying to get health insurance for for pets. <laughs> health insurance for pets. Health insurance for pets. Wow. So this guy's going to be something else. Watch out for Gargoyla. Gargoyla. Yes. Oh, yuck. The, the Gargoyla quotient. The Gargoyla quotient. Oh, boy, I can I can wait. Oh my God! You're gonna, he's going to blow. He's going to blow your. Uh, Blow your mind. This is one that I. Sh- this is the final one. Okay, sure. I'm, I'm gonna. I have to get going after this. This is what we're hoping is gonna is gonna come come through. We're not sure yet, though. Okay. Okay. The Van Morrison Variety Show. <laughs> the Van Morrison Variety yeah. Show. You mean Van Morrison, the <laughs> the crankiest man on earth. Oh, well, you know, the way we see it and the way we're pitching it to him, he's going to tell jokes. <laughs> That's so, this gonna, is so, this is, I can tell you, don't do this. He's going to dance. <laughs> dance? You're going to have Van Moore. Oh, oh my God, what? what? Have, you, have, you, have, you, have you seen him in The Last Waltz when he's doing those leg kicks? Well, no. Now you're putting him on a show. <laughs> what else? What else is he going to do on the Van Moore? What is it called? Uh, the t- uh, right now we're just working with the Van Morrison Variety uh, uh, two hours. <laughs> the two hours. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you're going to call it the Van Morrison Variety two hours? <laughs> exactly. Well, that rolls off the tongue. I take back everything I said about it. Just the name alone is going to make it a hit. It's enticing. It is enticing. So yeah, he's gonna he's gonna come out. He's gonna do like a little monologue for like fifteen minutes. Of what? Just you know, talking about showbiz, talking about what, what he thinks of the world. You know, and then he'll probably tell a bunch of jokes. Uh huh. Do a little, I don't know, soft shoe or something, and then he'll introduce whoever his guests are. We're, we're trying to get Nora Jones to uh, do a couple duets with him. Stuff like that, you know. Well, uh, that, this sounds like a. I hope this show makes it. Because this this is the first I thought nothing would ever top the uh, Chevy Chase show, right? Which and, I liked. Uh, I know I know it got a bad rap. Yeah, it kind of did get a bad rap. And then the Magic Hour topped it. The Magic Johnson talk show. Oh right? yeah, yeah, that was good too. That was good too. But I don't think I don't think any of them will compare to the. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I don't more think... than variety two hours. <laughs> I don't think so either. I think the fact that you're handing Van Morrison the keys to two hours of television. He deserves it. (laughs) Well, I can't wait for that soft shoe. Wait till you hear the jokes. I'm just hoping the jokes don't get lost in the accent, you know? Yeah, in the thick brogue. Yeah. Yeah, or the the violent temper. Well, you know, I've I've heard about that, but I think that's something we can can control. You know, I think if, uh, I know he likes to drink a little bit, so we'll just give him... As much of that as he wants. As much what? Alcohol. 
<laughs> Why? That's the dumbest. You know, you don't give him any of it. I think it'll it'll keep him keep him loose, and uh, you know, I, th- I think I yes, think he will be loose. Oh my God! Please, I am praying right now. Okay. Let the Van Morrison Variety two hours. We're trying. We're trying. If that doesn't work, we're hoping to do something with Dylan, maybe. Yeah, that 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 would be funny, but nothing would be funnier than what you have planned for Van Morrison. Oh, well, it's going to be good. I, uh, I, I'll keep my fingers crossed, and yeah. and uh, I'll, uh, you know, you know, it could help. What a write-in campaign by, by your listeners, like a, a petition. Uh huh. Yeah. So people can write to the Shout Network. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess where can they get the address? Well, you can uh, you can log log on to uh, shoutnetwork dot uh, org. Shoutnetwork.org. Yeah, maybe by by the time they log on, there'll be there'll be some kind of uh, online petition worked up. Okay, so that's not there now. Not yet, but it's a good idea, I think. Okay. So hopefully by tomorrow. So people, please let's get a writing campaign going for uh, the Van Morrison Variety Two Hours. Yes. Yeah. And Matthew Tompkins, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Great to talk to you. And good luck with your spring season over Th- at the Shout Network. Thank you so much. Now we are going to do the. Uh, we got to do a little contest. Matthew? Yes, yes. I'm going to say goodbye to you. Goodbye to you. Good luck. Okay, bye. Bye. We have a few minutes left. We have to do the uh, the art contest now. Just a few minutes left. <laughs>